we graft tomatoes for a couple different reasons. One is to help manage soil-borne diseases. We graft tomatoes onto interspecific rootstock hybrids that carry quantitative as well as major gene resistance against many of our most important pathogens that are root infecting. So we can manage root infecting diseases this way. And also many of these rootstocks have a lot of vigor, much more so than the domestic tomato hybrids, uh, because they are a cross between a wild and a domestic species. So in this way, you get both disease management and increased vigor and therefore increased yield. Grafting is a new technology in the United States, but people have been conducting grafting of herbaceous plants like tomatoes and peppers and eggplants all over the world since the 1920s. The first plants to be grafted were actually watermelons, and they would graft watermelons onto fig leaf gourd rootstocks in order to manage fusarium wilt of melon. This occurred back in the 1920s. In the 1950s, tomatoes started being grafted in Asia and in India in order to manage a disease known as bacterial wilt. Now here in the Midwestern United States, we don't have bacterial wilt, but we're finding there's a lot of other important reasons to graft. Grafting tomatoes is a good way to manage diseases organically. This is one of the few ways to manage root infecting pathogens like fusarium wilt, verticillium wilt, and root knot nematodes and these are all important diseases in the Midwest. The other reason that we graft is to increase the vigor and yield and crop productivity of those plants. Keep in mind that we're grafting our plants with interspecific hybrid rootstocks. So what that means is it's actually a cross between a wild tomato and a domestic species. Now what these wild tomatoes bring in is not only disease resistance, but also increased vigor. And it's very easy to tell a grafted plant from a non-grafted plant just by observing the vigor and the growth of the plants. So many of our growers have adopted this technology not only to increase yield, but also to manage disease and therefore reduce risk in their growing systems. In particular, high tunnel growers really find grafting to be very useful. In high tunnels, we have limited crop rotations, and many high tunnel growers have issues with soil-borne diseases. You can also utilize these resistant rootstocks in order to manage the diseases preventatively in high tunnels. By using a resistant rootstock, you can therefore reduce the chances of having infested soils later on. The other thing to keep in mind is that many of our high tunnel growers are utilizing specialty cultivars like heirlooms and often cater to farmers markets and direct sales. Now, heirloom tomatoes have very little disease resistance to them, and so they partner well with our interspecific hybrid rootstocks, which bring a lot of disease resistance along. The other thing that's nice about heirlooms is they bring a pretty healthy revenue at the farmer's market, making this process more economically feasible. Overall, the grafting process is pretty simple and can be adopted pretty easily by folks with some experience in plant propagation. A couple things I'd recommend if it's your first batch don't forget that those plants can heat up very quickly in that healing chamber, and so you want to work hard to take steps to prevent it from heating up by putting it in the right location, and then also checking on the plants quite often during the course of the day. Along those same lines, it's really important to keep a close eye on the plants, not only during the grafting process and in the healing chamber, but also leading up to the day of grafting. The plants are growing very rapidly at this point in their lives, and so it's important to make sure you catch them on the right day or the right couple days in order to make the grafting process much simpler. And then don't forget, it never hurts to have some extra non-grafted plants around or a source of non-grafted plants in case something happens, that way you have a backup. The overall process is pretty simple, uh, but there's a lot of very important steps that can be somewhat difficult. Basically, we graft a plant when it's about three and a half weeks old. It's just a small seedling. And then it goes into a healing chamber for about seven to nine days where the graft union will reform and redevelop that tissue. Uh, then we take them out of the chamber and reintroduce light and get them hardened off to go back into the field because they do soften up quite a bit when they're in that healing chamber. And this whole process adds about two weeks as compared to non-grafted plants. For more information about tomato grafting, be sure to check out a SARA fact sheet that was published in 2010. We also have a fair amount of information at the K-State Research and Extension website, and you can find that by contacting myself or others in the Department of Horticulture at Kansas State University.